Africa. Hello everyone, welcome to Arise Africa on the Africa Broadcasting Network. And yes, the program Arise Africa is highly entertaining and informative as well. And uh, my name is Chichi Wabo. But of course, I will not be doing the entertaining alone. I have someone right here with me at the studio. I am Timi Akurene. Mm, and together we are saying welcome, 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 welcome. welcome. <laughs> and in French they say the envy. Okay, uh, well, since I can do foreign languages, uh, I'll go with uh, the southwestern part of Nigeria where they say Cabo. Mm. That is welcome. C'est bien. That's good. What is that? That is good. Okay, now don't sell <laughs> me in French. <laughs> Well, uh, you know it's December and of course it's the Yuletide. Christmas is in the air and all around you there are stuff happening. I tell you, of course, you do know what it's all about. And that is why today on the program Rise Africa, we present to you Christmas special. Oh, Christmas special. Oh, Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> when I think of Christmas, I, I can't imagine anything more than um, the Christmas carols. You know, the gifts, hampers most especially. I, mm. I, I love hampers. Mm. Right from when I was a kid, I've always loved it. Will you give me one? Hampers. Um, let's, ah. let's talk about that later. We are fellow staff now. Uh, yes, later we'll talk about <laughs> the hamper side of it. So, tell me, tell me, what do we have? We have a lot in store for our viewers today. We are going to be looking at the significance of Christmas. Chichi, you know, Christmas has lots of significance. It's really for Christians because it's all about Christ. It's all about Jesus. Uh, even though sometimes you tend to play around it, but it's still there, it's still there. And also, we have some special segments that will definitely thrill our audience. Well, I, I feel I feel I'm saying too much already. Mm. Chichi. You don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Exactly. <laughs> well, let's bring you our African proverbs. We'll be back after this time now. Africa on ABN and yes it's a Christmas special episode where we're going to be talking about Christmas 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 and we are moving straight into the lifestyle segment and uh, Timmy what do we have on the lifestyle segment um, for the lifestyle segment we are going to be looking at some um, outdoor Christmas decors Beautiful. outdoor now you know um, we have focused more on um, decorating the inside of our houses but now we are beginning to embrace this uh, Western style of Decorating the streets, um, public buildings, that's the exterior. Even houses now do it. They've adopted it and it's becoming a culture in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. So yes. uh, that is what we're going to be looking at. Chi Chi will be taking us on a cruise. We'll be right back. This is the lifestyle segment of Arise Africa. And today on the Christmas special edition, we'll be talking about exterior decorations. And yes, of course, one of the signs that Christmas is around the corner is when you see decorations in the streets, in public buildings, yes, in shops, and in the outdoors of houses. That is when you know that Christmas is right there. And I have someone that Tina of Tina C Collections, who's going to be telling us more about this. Well, welcome. You are welcome. Compliments of the season. Same to you. It's good to have you today on the show. Thank you. All right. So we're talking about exterior or outdoor decorations during this Christmas season. Yes. And I'd like to know what are the specific outdoor decorations that people actually go for uh, during this uh, season of Yuletide? Well, there are so many of them, but the ones that are commonly used by people, you have the Christmas tree, the lights, Christmas bells, wreaths, uh, banners, different hangings, stars, and a lot of them. Thank you. So previously, that's a couple of years ago, it wasn't really like that. I mean, you would walk on the streets and then you'd see uh, um, decorations like that. It wasn't really like that in the past. So it's kind of changing. I want to know, why is it that more and more people, more and more corporate organizations, and uh, I mean, they kind of like, 
have embraced the culture, which I know, we know, used to be Western. They've kind of embraced the culture of doing those decorations. I mean, making those places beautiful and exceptional during this Yuletide period. Uh, from about October, you are walking along the street, you see a Christmas decor everywhere, the homes, bells are ringing for Christmas, and people see all this online, they see them on YouTube, they see them on television, and so everybody is enticed, you want to look like the outside world, just as our lifestyles are changing, people now embrace the modern way of doing Christmas instead of just eating rice and stew and dancing. It is now about decoration, brightening your environment, your home and making it really look nice once in a year. How is the Christmas decorations going so far in Africa? I know that uh, there are specific colors for the season. I also heard someone say, no, there ought not to be specific colors. I mean, you could use blue or any other color. Could you throw more light on the matter of colors for this season? Yes, yeah, specifically, there are three colors for Christmas. Gold, red, and uh, green. These three colors represent the gifts given to Jesus Christ at birth by the three wise men. But with uh, modernization of everything, some people choose to use different colors, especially corporate bodies. They try to use the colors of their uh, emblem, their logo, to uh, put up those colors in their offices, their environment, to uh, depict and reflect their colors. Specifically, the Christmas colors are red, green, and gold. Between the interior and the exterior decorations, the materials and all that, which one do people actually go for more during the season? Do you have more people going for the interior or the exterior decorations? They go more for interior. That is their homes. And what they use mostly for their homes, the Christmas tree is number one which sits elegantly in the sitting room and they go for for the wreath this is the wreath okay. some people hang this on the the gates of their houses those who happen to uh, share their uh, compounds with other people they can hang this uh, hang this on their doors and you have bow ties you have balls these are balls that you put on the Christmas, you hang on the Christmas trees. And apart from the balls, there are, in fact, so many other things. And so you have bundles of such things that people place in their Christmas trees. The idea is for people to get them and use them as their gifts. But uh, fortunately or unfortunately, these ones come in artificial ways, so we just hang them on the trees for people to see. <laughs> I feel I should do something like that for my apartment. What do you think? Well, I think I like that. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it looks like a beautiful sight to behold. It's still Arise Africa and it's time to go into the main discussion for today. And of course, we'll be talking with our guest for today. And that's Bishop Edward Oroje. He's the Bishop of the Guardian of Life Christian Assembly. And uh, we'll be right back after this interview. Christmas is a celebration that marks the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's celebrated by Christians, millions of Christians across the world, different countries, and it has been celebrated for hundreds of years. Um, on Arise Africa today, we have the Bishop of the Garden of Life Assembly, his uh, Bishop Dr. Edward Rubji, JP. He's going to be talking to us about Christmas. Now, yes, we know about Christmas, but we are going to be looking at the significance of Christmas because Christmas today, as it is, has um, gone beyond the scope of Christians. But we are going to be narrowing it down to Christians, how we celebrate Christmas and why it is important for us to celebrate Christmas. 
Nice to have you on Arise Africa today, Bishop. Um, the topic at hand, sir, Christmas. It is celebrated by Christians and non-Christians alike. People uh, have their different definitions of celebration when it comes to Christmas. But for a Christian, what is Christmas? Christmas, by definition, is the celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. The human who was salvation to mankind. And every Christian is celebrate Christmas to appreciate the core value of his coming to this world to redeem us from our sin. So Christmas celebration is necessary in the life of every Christian. Okay. Um, now, is it compulsory for a Christian to mark that it's not as a compulsory, it's compulsory and mandatory. It's something you must do as a Christian. Okay. Every Christian should celebrate Christmas. Because if the birth of Christ has it taken place, there was no Christianity. Before Christ came to this world, there was no like Christmas. But after the birth of Christ, we discovered it because it was prophesied that the Messiah would come there eh, to redeem us from our sin. And look into the channel how Christ came to this world. Eh? And look at the nation where you will deliver it. Yeah? It's enough for every Christian to celebrate Christmas because if you don't celebrate your birthday, who will celebrate your birthday? Wow, that's a strong word. Uh, well, that brings me to the how. Now, we, we, we've been able to uh, outline the fact that we have to celebrate it. So, how do we celebrate it? Because we celebrate Christmas, number one, as a Christian, it's a period of sober reflection, thinking of the type of life you lead. Every December, every, every one of us as a Christian, which are spiritual appraiser. How do you live your life with Christ? How do you project or propagate the gospel? How do you go to Christ? That is the purpose of Christmas. Christmas is a period where you take care of the needy. You take care of the less privileged. It's not for your self-satisfaction. Eh? You take care of people because Christ came. Christ is love. And if you want to celebrate Christmas, you have to celebrate love to the unbeliever and the, the believers. There should be no discrimination when you're celebrating Christmas. Okay, um, what we, we've had cases of people, you know, they get drunk, they drive, and maybe get involved in an accident on Christmas Day, and they say they are celebrating Christmas. Well, also. that cannot be ruled because it's an excitement. It's a festival period. It depends on how you want to celebrate your Christmas. It's a festival period. Some people are carried away at excitement. So, the only thing you tell people is that Christmas is not for you to get yourself to go to the house of God. Then you do that. I know I said it before. I pray that how have I lived my life? How have I been able to affect the world? Yes. You should make an impact during Christmas period. Like in my ministry here, we go to the leper's village okay. where people cannot walk. That's cool. We give them food, we give them protein. That's what we've been for the past 15 years. And in the church here, we take care of the, the, the widows. We give them food. And those that are aged people, we take care of them. That's a very important Not for you per se. But on the other way, little children, they don't, know what, they don't know what I'm talking about now. Little children, they see decoration as Christmas, you buy them new clothes, they go out in, eating and drinking. But for the adults, we've gone, we've deviated from the real Christmas celebration by getting ourselves drunk, people living from this course life. That is not celebration of Christmas. And in every origin, in every original currency, there will be catastrophes. Okay. So that's it. Um, so you, you made mention of um, giving of gifts, like you said um, your uh, church here gets involved in during Christmas. Um, is it only during Christmas we should imbibe that habit of giving out for gifts? For example, in my church, I do that on my birthday. Okay. I do that the, the day, the founding day of the church, the day the church was founded. We do that on Easter. It's not only Christmas. From time to time, we look at, we, we go to the church, we look at people in the church. Who, are, who, 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 who does have anything they are doing? We empower them. We give them, we give them loan with tax interest. We give them money to we'll start your business. So that's what we do. It's not just uh, only Christmas, but don't forget Christmas is the climax. That's true. The climax. No, you should not wait for that day, but that is the peak. Well, uh, we've been talking to Bishop Doctor Edward Roje on the significance of Christmas the importance of Christmas. It cannot be overemphasized. He'll still be coming back, but we have to go on a short break. We'll be right back in a moment. Stay tuned.
glad to have you back. It's still Arise Africa, and we are still talking on the importance of Christmas with Bishop Dr. Edward Rubji, JP of the Garden of Life Assembly. Bishop, glad you're still here with us. So we are going to be moving on right now. Um, now, we have some Christians that believe that Christ wasn't born on the 25th of December, and so they see no reason why we should celebrate Christmas on the 25th of December. The question you should ask is, was Christ born at all? If he was born, even they could not know the dates, and all the Christians have come together that would fix the dates. Other religion, I don't want to mention them, they don't have permanent they celebrate the birth of the father of their uh, belief. Yes. But we Christians have been that this is what we must do. The date doesn't matter. The most important thing is that we are celebrating the man that came to this world to die for us. Whether it's in January, whether it's in uh, February, whether it's in December, it doesn't matter. We will be like, we we'll go to church on Sunday and God rested on Sabbath day, Sabbath day, Saturday. But we the Christians will come together and we we'll celebrate, we will go to church and celebrate the resurrection day. Okay. If Christ has no reason, we will not celebrate it. That's true. So, whether Christ is born on the 25th, whether he's not born on the 25th, the most important thing is that this man was born, he came to this planet Earth. Since it was not documented in the Bible, then let us fix a date in this area, this period. Because Christ was born in the, the Amatam period. And the Amatam has started now. So what did we pick? That's what we decided to pick this date. So the idea of saying whether Christ was born on the 25th or not born on the 25th is not that. We have different ideology, different perspective. And one other thing is that what we do to our parents, who does have best day? When they die, we sit together and say, okay, let us say our father lives so so years. And like my grandfather and I say, how many festivals they do in 20, 20 years? Eh? How many of them have you seen? If you say four, now they can estimate your age. As an advice, uh, what advice would you give to our viewers out there who may want to indulge in clothes and drinks and food and forget about the main reason for the season? Well, for, the, for those of you that are listening to us, Christmas is a period of sober reflection. Sit down and think of your life. If you know a man came to this world and to redeem you from the debt you owe, the debt you owe, a man came and paid for it, what you should do, you go to the church and dedicate your life to Christ. Christmas period is a period that every one of us should draw some bad habits, not getting drunk, not living from this first life. Not, you decorate your house, you decorate your compound, and inside you are full of sin. Then the purpose is defeated. So I'm appealing to every Christian. Go home now and study the word of God, go to church, and dedicate your life to Christ. That is the aim and objective of Esmas. It's been nice um, talking to you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. We've been talking to uh, Bishop Dr. Edward Rogge of the Garden of Life Assembly, and I must say he has really enlightened us on the reasons why we should celebrate Christmas, how it should be celebrated. And of course, for those of you that have some um, little doubts on whether it should be celebrated. I think uh, your questions have been answered. Let's go back to the studio. Your teacher and I will continue from there. Stay tuned. interview by Timmy. Well, the program continues. So, Timmy, what do we have next? We'll be joining Walter on the street where we'll be asking people questions on if they had the opportunity to celebrate Christmas in any part of the world, uh, where would it be? And may I throw that to you right now? If you have the opportunity to celebrate Christmas in any part of the globe, where would you pick? If I had the opportunity, I would love to spend okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. Slowly. I hold on right there. Uh, we'll be joining Walter when we return. We'll get Chi Chi's answer. I may also give you mine too. Walter, over to you. If you were given the opportunity to go to any part of the world to spend your Christmas holiday, what would you want to go to and why? I would like to go to Dubai. Dubai. Yes. Because because Dubai is a beautiful place. It's a nice place. You know, we see beautiful things. 
you know when you go out in Dubai you will see beautiful houses tourism where you can enjoy yourself and the weather in Dubai is very okay that is the reason why I want to go to Dubai to spend my Christmas All right. me personally I want to go to United States the reason why I want to go to United States is because of there are no funds there uh, things that you love to have, you can find that there are things like recreation that will make you feel happy and better. So that's why I would love to go there and spend my holiday. Alright, alright. You want to go to the US of A. She wants to go to the US of A. Okay, you, what would you want to go to? Of course, I wouldn't like to go anywhere apart from Nigeria. I would just like to spend my Christmas in Nigeria with my family. Wow. Just with your family? Yeah. All right, right. That, that's, that's very beautiful. I wish you Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. If you were given an opportunity to spend your Christmas holiday in any part of the world, where would you want to spend your Christmas holiday? Worry. Worry? She wants to spend it in worry? Okay. Can you tell us the reason why you want to spend it in worry? Because, because of one, number one, because of my business. Okay. Uh -huh. And just like that, I just like worry to spend my... S mice. Wow. wow. She wants to spend our Christmas holiday in worry. So people in worry, wow. Wherever you are, please come around. Come around and spend it. Come and buy whatever you want to buy in a beautiful shop because she is spending her Christmas holiday because of you in worry. Alright, thank you very much. Nice talking with you. Uh -huh. All right. If you are given an opportunity to spend your Christmas holiday in any part of the world, where would you want to spend it? I'd rather go to my village. To spend it. Wow! Dad wants to go to his village! Not the UK, not in France, but in the village. So Daddy, can you tell us why? Because it's a time of reunion. You remember your old friend, they come home, we reconcile together, family meeting, then we remember our old, uh, old, old foundation. Wow. A, it can't be broken. Wow, 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 that's so beautiful. Wow, that's so beautiful. I want to say, getting old is beautiful. Mm, mm. I wish you success now. Merry Christmas to you. I wish you the same. All right. Thank you, Walter. It's still Arise Africa, and we just uh, left Walter, who was on the street, asking people where they would love to celebrate their Christmas, if given the opportunity to pick any part of the world. And Chichi. Back to you. So now you're going to tell me. Where would you pick? I think we have to start with the people. I mean, those who talked about that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That's true. It was, I, I, I really, they really have interesting answers. Seriously. Yes. I mean, one said Dubai. The other said UK. You know, but I, said I love the, the man who said he would like to spend his Christmas at his village. Yes. I, it really uh, struck me, you know. We should really go to our villages. Though I wouldn't like to go to my village if given the opportunity yet, I, I prefer Rio. Do you know that's actually, that's the answer I was going to give you. What? Really? Your village? Oh, mon Dio, I love my village. To spend but I would prefer village. to spend it in Rio, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, yes. you know, explore the beaches. But anyway, uh, that's a topic for another day. So, what do we have next? Oh, yes. Up next is the celebrity sport. And today we are beaming the lights on Genevieve Naji. Happy viewing. Genevieve Nanji is a Nigeria actress and singer born on May 3rd, 1979. Jenny, as she is fondly called, was born in Imbise, Imo State, Nigeria, but grew up in Lagos. She is the fourth of eight children and was brought up in a middle class environment. She attended Methodist Girls College, Yaba, Lagos, before transferring into the University of Lagos. While at the university, she began auditioning for acting jobs amongst many Nollywood projects. Naji started her acting career as a child actress in the then popular television soap opera, Ripus, at the age of 8. In 1998, at the age of 19, she was introduced into the growing Nigeria film industry with the movie Most Wanted. As an upcoming actress, trying to create a niche for herself, she went through various minor roles seeking for that opportunity for a breakthrough. Her subsequent movies, Last Party, Mark of the Beast and Ijele, brought forth an icon to be loved and adored by many. Her name became a household name and her image the desire of every young girl. 
in 2002, she starred in the movie Sharon Stone on her fame shot beyond the shores of Nigeria to the rest of Africa and several European countries. One can say that through the boys, Genevieve reinvented the Nigeria film industry, introducing Nollywood to the rest of the world. In 2010, she starred in the award-winning movie, EJ, The Journey. Naji has starred in over 18 Nollywood movies, some of which are The Mirror Ball in 2010, Half of a Yellow Sun in 2011, and her most recent movie, Road to Yesterday, which was released in November 2015. Genevieve Naji is considered to be one of the best paid actresses in Nollywood. In 2008, in a bid to give back to the society, Genevieve launched a clothing line, Saint Genevieve, which donates a percentage of its proceeds to charity. In 2009, Genevieve made history by being the first Nigeria actress to be profiled on the Oprah Winfrey show. On an episode about the most popular people around the world, where Oprah referred to her as the Julia Roberts of Africa. In 2004, she signed a recording contract with EKB Records, a Ghanaian record label, and released her debut album, One Logo Logo Line, a mix of R&B, hip-hop, and urban music. Energy has received several awards and nominations for her work, including the Best Actress of the Year Award at the 2001 City People Awards and the Best Actress in a Leading Role Award at the 2005 African Movie Academy Award. She won the African Movie Academy Award for Best Actress in a Leading Role in 2005. In 2011, she was honored as a member of the Order of the Federal Republic by the Nigeria government for her contribution to Nollywood. Africa, please let's give it up for one of Nigeria's finest in the movie industry. That was Celebrity Sports where we beamed our lights on Genevieve Naji, a lovely, lovely Nigerian actress. I really do adore her. Well, it's been nice having you around. Uh, before we go, we would like to thank uh, Tina C Collections. Tina C Collections located at the Airport Road, Wari, Delta State. And also, we would like to thank uh, Bishop Edward Rouge of the Garden of Life uh, Christian Assembly here also in Wari, Delta State, Nigeria. And do not forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and then on Instagram. And then uh, you can also call us on the number that you can see on your screen. We are also grateful to the producer and the cameraman as well as the director of today's program and of, of the program Arise Africa. Thank you so much. Arise Africa will be coming your way next time and from me it's goodbye. It's goodbye from me.